and take it all. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are so awesome, God. We thank you, God, that we find security in you, God. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to wrap us in your arms, God. That you would continue to cover us and keep us, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that though we don't deserve your love, we don't deserve your mercy and your kindness, God, you are faithful. Yes, you are, Lord. Thank you. you give us mercy and grace, God, every new, brand new, every morning, God. Yes, you Lord. love us so, God. Yes, thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We messed up just this morning, God. Yes, Lord. And yet, you still love us, God. We are in your house, praising and worshiping you, God. Your presence is here, God, and we thank you for allowing us to feel your presence, God. Allowing us to be in your presence, God. We thank you for being so awesome. Yes, thank now, Lord, we ask that you would just continue in the service, God. That you would speak to us, God. That you would sit Jeffrey down, God. That you would rise up, God. That you would be lifted up yes, in this Lord. place. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. All right, if you have your Bible, turn your Bible to Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 14 through 16. And listen. We're going to read Ruth chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. And then we'll get into it, all right? Everybody got it? Amen. It says, I'll tell you what it says, so I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> and it says, And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth cleaved unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Right, I want to talk about yeah. staying the course. Yeah. Amen. So last week we discussed, you are always going to be okay, mm -hmm. right? right? And since we discussed that you are always going to be okay, it seems fitting that this week we talk about, now since you know you're gonna be okay, mm -hmm. stay the course, mm -hmm. right? In other words, don't give up. So here's the deal, this is where we are. We are, we are in this situation where so you got me. We are in this situation where um, we have talked to God, we have discussed with God, we have um, we have prayed and pleaded with God. And we find ourselves in a situation where we have absolutely no control. And last week we discussed that when we find ourselves in that position, guess what? We are always going to be okay. But now we are at this point, at this point where we are asking God, when? I've done everything. I'm doing what you asked me to do. I'm going where you asked me to go. I'm saying what you asked me to say. And I'm still not receiving those things that I have asked and pleaded with you about. And then the question is, then we start asking ourselves this question. Is it worth it? Has anybody ever been there? Is it really worth it? Maybe I should just simply throw in the towel. I don't want to do this any. I can still praise God and worship God in the shadows and I don't have to talk to nobody or do nothing. 
And we get to a point where we say, I'm done, and throw in our time. <clears throat> and I'm telling you today that we have to stay the course. Now, let me give you a little background. I want to put things into context for us first. God gives us his love. Amen. It is a love that no matter how many times we mess up, no matter how many times we do wrong, no matter how many times we fail the test, he just keeps on loving us. He never seems to run out of love for us. He never seems to run out of patience for us. He never seems to want to throw in the towel on us. Even though just yesterday, you said, Lord, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. And today, you've already done it. My patience would wear thin at some point, and I would say, I'm done with you. But God never gets done with us, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, like Naomi in this scripture, we keep pushing him away even though all he does is show us love. We say things like, I'm tired mm -hmm. and I just want to give up even though mm -hmm. he continues to love and care for us. And so I'm telling you today, stay the course. Mm -hmm. Now let me bring you up to date. Naomi and her husband, Elamelech, and their two sons, they all moved to Moab. Mm -hmm. They moved to Moab because there was a famine in the land of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Now it's important to note that the Moabites were excluded from the nation of, from the uh, uh, Israelites, the nation of Israel. It's important to note that because later on, Ruth is going to make a declaration. Mm -hmm. And it's important to know that the Moabites Moabite were not included but were excluded from the nation of Israel. But while in this land of Moab, Elimelech dies. Right. He leaves Naomi with her two sons and those two sons later married two Moabite women. Mm -hmm. Right? All right, now, those two Moabite women were Orpah and Ruth. Uh -huh. They lived there another 10 years. And then Naomi's two sons, both of them died. Mm -hmm. Which then leaves Orpah, Ruth, and Naomi all by themselves. Yeah. Traditionally, it was the men who made the money for the family, and so without the men in the family, traditionally, they would have died, to make it plain and simple. The father provided and supported the family. If the father died, the sons would take over the duties of supporting the family. Now, if all of the sons are dead, then there's no means of support for the family. Therefore, the women had to either find a way to make money or starve and die. Mm -hmm. That's where we are, okay, right. in the scripture. They are at a point where they have to make a choice. Do we stay the course or do we give up? Mm -hmm. After hearing the rumors that God had visited her people and gave them bread, Naomi decides that she will return to her home, to her homeland. And this is not a problem for Naomi because Naomi is part of that Israelite nation, mm -hmm. right? And so she tells Ruth and Orpah to go back to Moab where they could possibly find husbands because they were still young and pretty. Seeing as how she didn't have any more sons for them to marry, she said, go back to Moab where you can find a husband 
And initially, both Orpah and Ruth said no, mm -hmm. that they were going to stay with Naomi, mm -hmm. that they were going to stay the course. But Naomi insisted, and finally, Orpah decides to leave and go back. I'm kind of reminded when we read the scripture about the parable that Jesus said about the seeds, mm -hmm. some falling into good ground, some falling on the road, some falling into other parts of the ground, and some taking root and some simply being eaten up by birds. In this situation, Orpah decided she would go on back home. Wasn't quite ready to stay the course. But Ruth, on the other hand, decided that she would stay. Mm -hmm. Ruth begins to beg Naomi to stop trying to get rid of her. To stop trying to send her back home. Which brings us to my first principle here, which is, we've come too far to turn back now. We started off this year, 2020 started off great. No, I, at least I thought it did. <laughs> it started off great. I was thinking to myself, we, we preached a sermon. I was thinking to myself, this is going to be a great year, 2020. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then we get to March. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 2020 didn't look so good all of a sudden. 2020 has a few cares that we had to deal with. We get to April and then all of a sudden we don't want 2020 no more. <laughs> and all of a sudden we get six, past, six months past that and we say 2020 is the worst year we've ever had. Mm -hmm. We started off with such optimism. <laughs> and somehow 2020 beat us up so that now we stand at a point wondering, is it worth it to continue on? The fact of the matter is, 2020 is only one year. And we've come this far. And it's too late to turn back now. Naomi says, return in verse 8. She says, turn again in verse 11. She says, turn again in verse 12. In which case, Orpah finally said, okay, I'm gone. <laughs> I'll take your advice. <laughs> Orpah said, each time you say return, it gets a little hard. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this time. She didn't say that. I'm, I'm putting that in now. I'm giving my spiritual imagination. And so Ruth, on the other hand, says, no, I'm going to stay. No, I'm going to stay. No, I'm going to stay. No, Naomi again says, go and do return uh, after thy sister-in-law. And as I looked at that, I thought to myself, what if at this very moment, when I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to stay the course or whether or not I'm going to leave, what if at that moment I make the wrong decision and decide to leave, and at that moment, was when I turned away from my blessing. Yes. I want y'all to take into consideration what, who Ruth really is. Had it not been for Ruth, there would not be a Boaz. Y'all with me, right? Yes. In which case, that line does not actually go down, right? right. Ruth was part of a grand plan. Mm -hmm. Y'all got me? Yeah. All right, so let's look at it. Ruth, on the other hand, makes a decision that would ultimately make her name live on for years. <laughs> By simply saying, no, I'm going to stay the course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I'm right about it because we're talking about Ruth right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many years has Ruth passed down mm -hmm. with this word of God? Ruth was being talked about in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ruth is being talked about in the year 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ruth is going to be talked about as long as God allows Ruth to be talked about. Mm -hmm. That's right. From one decision to say, no, right. I'm going to stay the course. Right. You have to understand where Ruth is coming from. Ruth had been in Naomi's family 10 years. Mm -hmm. 
Ruth has seen tragedy after tragedy. But in that 10 years time, I, 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 we, we, I hope I get this right. We were talking about this this morning. I asked my wife to ask, uh, to find out how long does it take before practicing something becomes, um, the word, uh, not habit, but becomes, uh, yeah, second nature. And the doctor said it takes about 66 days of doing something, the average of 66 days of doing something before it becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ruth had been with Naomi 10 years. Wow. Y'all eat. Let me explain. Ruth had experienced Naomi's God mm -hmm. 10 years. Mm -hmm. Ruth had been preached to 10 years. Mm -hmm. yep. Ruth had lived this Israelite life 10 years. Mm -hmm. Ruth had been part of this Israelite family 10 years. Right. So if it only takes 66 days, this, this God that Ruth had learned about uh -huh. has now become automatic. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Hmm. But she's seen tragedy after tragedy. Right. First her father-in-law dies. Yeah. Next her husband dies. Mm -hmm. Then her brother-in-law dies. Mm -hmm. Could be the other way around. In all, Ruth has seen Enough to say, I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. She's seen enough to say that I had enough. Mm -hmm. She could say, you know what, Naomi, your family cursed. <laughs> I don't know about your God, but your family is cursed. <laughs> and I got to get away. But Ruth says, no. Every time Naomi says, go away, Ruth says, no, I'm staying right here. Because also in that 10 years, although she has experienced some tragedy, right. she's also experienced some God. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Also in that 10 years, she's seen how God has taken care of Naomi's family, even in spite of losing those heads of the family. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I imagine that she took an inventory every time Naomi said leave. Mm -hmm. And I imagine she said, no. That's not advantageous for me to do. <laughs> I get nothing out of that one. I imagine she decided that uh, she too was in too deep. She's come too far. And she might as well see it to the end. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I have to say this. We've come way too far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To let 2020 mm -hmm. Defeat us. Right. We are almost at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. And as you yeah. know, with every new year comes new hope. Yeah. We are almost at the end. We've come too far to give up right now. Mm -hmm. I know that things have gotten a little harder. That things have gotten a little scarier. I know that it seems like there's one thing after another thing after another thing, but the fact of the matter is we made it through this far. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to say like Ruth, whether thou goest, mm -hmm. That's right. I yes, will go. Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, you can only make a declaration like that when you know that you know that you know that God has got this thing taken care right. of. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the only way you can make that declaration is by knowing who God is mm -hmm. and knowing what God can do. So the question is, if you're going to stay the course, you have to know that God is going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, yes. God, I'm going to. Yes. I've seen you do too much. I've seen your level of love on display, and I decided I can't live without it, and I'm in too deep yeah. to try to get out of it or to give up now. Old folks used to say, you can't make me doubt it because I know too much about it. Ruth has been here 10 years. She knows too much about it. We've been through this too long to think that God is not going to take care of us. Yes, we right. know too much yes, about that. him. Yes. I'm 
reminded of Job. When Job says, naked I came into yes. this world. Yes. Naked I will leave, I will return. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed yes. 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 be the name oh. of the Lord. What yes. that essentially says is it really doesn't matter. Right. Yes. God is still God. Yes, he is. And he's still in the blessing business. Yes. And he's blessed me some and he's taken away some, but those were still blessings in disguise. And so either way, yes. God is still to be blessed. Yes, he is. In spite of where we are. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. What that essentially means is I have to love the Lord regardless. That's right. I have to love the Lord and say, because I love him, yeah. I'm going to stay the course. Right. Yes. That's right. No matter what my situation looks like, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what my tra what tragedies may come, I love the Lord and so I'm going to stay. The next thing Ruth teaches us is we have to go ahead and let people know where we stand. Okay, all right, come on now. Let me give you an example. Uh, we say we're Christians. Uh, I've seen more Christians worry more than the other people who ain't Christians. Uh, I've seen more Christians declare this is the end way more than I've seen the people who ain't Christians declaring it. We're the ones running scared. Wow. When we're the ones who have God. It's funny, ain't it? We have to let people know where we stand. Ruth says no to Naomi. And she says, not only does she say no, but she says no, and will you stop? Will you leave me alone? I said no. Let it go. She said, where you go, I'm going. Yes. Where you lodge, I'm lodging. Your people are going to be my people. Yes. Your God is going to be my God. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Because you have to make a de declaration to the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to tell him exactly where you stand. All right, come on. And you have to tell him that he's a liar to tell you to quit right now. Yeah. Yeah. You have yeah. to understand that he's, his whole job is to slow you down. Mm -hmm. is to stop you from doing what you were called and designed to do. Mm -hmm. And so you have to start having this internal battle and we have to start saying, will you leave me alone? Yes. Wherever God goes, I'm going. Yes. Uh -huh. Wherever he lodges, I'm lodging. Mm -hmm. Where his, his people are going to be my people. Yes. And he is he going is to be my God. Yes, yes. At some point, we got to start making our declaration and start telling the devil he's a liar. Yes, yes. Yeah. We've been in this thing way too long. Yes. To fall for those same tricks. Mm. When I was a babe in Christ, that used to work. <laughs> it shouldn't work now. Right, that's right. After being in it 20, 30 years, it shouldn't still work, but it does. Mm. We have to make our declaration. In other words, Ruth says, I'm in this too long. Everywhere you go, I'm going. Uh -huh. You going to sleep here? I'm sleeping with you. <laughs> your, uh, your cousins, your uncles, your aunts, uh -huh. your daddy, your mama, your mama's mama, <laughs> they going to be my mama's mama too. If you call them cousin, I'm going to call them cousin too. Likewise, if you call him uncle, I'm calling him uncle too. That sounds like a person who understands that these are God's people that I want to be a part of. Doesn't sound like somebody who's simply heard of God. Sounds like somebody who's actually a member. Oh, yeah, that's right. Right? What I mean by that is too many times we say things that sound like we are just people who heard mm -hmm. about God right. rather That's than right. people say who that. are members. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on here. Too many times the words that come out of our mouth sound like somebody who just simply heard this is what God has done. Wow. Yeah. But have never experienced God firsthand. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And here's the thing. God has been too good mm -hmm. for us to say we haven't experienced him firsthand. Mm -hmm. mm. You have to understand what Ruth is doing here. Ruth is forsaking her mother and father. Mm -hmm. She's throwing away the gods she knew growing up. More importantly, she's willing to become a second-class citizen. Wow. Hmm. Y'all heard me say earlier that the Moabites were excluded from the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. That meant that Ruth can never go to the temple. Hmm. That meant that Ruth could never actually do the things that these normal Israelites could do. Mm -hmm. That means that Ruth is going to be a second-class citizen. Wow. Hmm. She can believe in God. And all of that stuff that goes with that, but she can never go in the temple and worship. Mm. She can't bring her sacrifices. She's not part of the, the club. Mm -hmm. But Ruth says, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Ruth says, your God mm -hmm. is going to be my God. And it's not that God, that God doesn't have any classes or, or sex mm -hmm. yes. or different people that he chooses and other people he doesn't choose. Yes. I'm glad that God chooses us all. Yes. Black, white, purple, pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even though we make all of these different things and rules, God says, come as you are. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever you are. Yes. I'm glad that God accepts me regardless. Thank so Ruth you. is going to come in as a second class citizen, but to God, she's first class all the way. That's right. Praise God. God. Because all those first class citizens, none of them got to have the line of Jesus come through. Wow. Hmm. But Ruth did. Mm -hmm. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That God took this second class citizen. <laughs> come on. That yeah. second class that you call second class. Yes. And decided I'm gonna make them first class. <laughs> and their name is gonna be known for the rest of the for the rest of the world. Yeah. And that their name will never be forgotten. Yeah. Even though. They're not really part of my family, quote, unquote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 23 and 3 says, An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even their tenth generation shall, shall, not, shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Wow. And Ruth said, your God is going to be my God. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a person who's willing to throw in the towel. Mm -mm. So what's important about that? What's important about that is, is that Ruth made a decision. Yes. And that decision was, doesn't matter what you say, doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter how hard it gets, I'm staying. Yeah. Children of God, we have to make our declaration mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter what this world does, yes. that it doesn't matter what the devil says, yeah. that it doesn't matter what my situation is, yeah. I'm going to stay the course. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ruth says, I'm not going. The next thing we have to look at with Ruth is, or what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Is we have to love God regardless mm -hmm. of the price. All right, all right now. I said regardless of the price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody likes to say salvation is free. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is say that you believe in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and that salvation is freely given, and it is. Mm -hmm. But you still got to pay something. <laughs> yes. And don't get me, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that God requires, uh, what I'm saying is God has said, this is what you have to do to be saved. But if you're going to be a Christian, mm -hmm. you have to give your life. Mm -hmm. And in giving your life, you are simply saying that there is no price that I'm not willing to pay mm -hmm. to serve God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because God requires that you relinquish your will yeah. Amen. To him. Mm -hmm. God requires that you give your life to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So the price you have to pay is his to determine. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. We have to love God regardless of the price. Mm. It didn't matter to Ruby that she didn't have a husband anymore. It didn't matter that they would probably starve to death and die. She made that declaration mm -hmm. that she's going to stay with God. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter where her next meal was coming from. Yeah. Didn't matter that she was a stranger in a strange land. Yeah. What mattered was her relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. What mattered was her love mm -hmm. that she had for Naomi, Naomi and God. Mm -hmm. Mm. In a relationship, God makes you part of his family. Right? Mm -hmm. Even people you don't know are still part of his family. Right. So how can you pick and choose who you're going to love? <laughs> because love is all about God. It's all part of his family. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, regardless of the price you have to pay, if we say we love God, we have to love God with no boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Which means even though it's hard on this Christian race, we have to stay the course because we told God, mm -hmm. this is what we're going to do. I'm going to run for you until I can't run no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live for you until I don't live anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you everything that I have. That's what we did, right? Didn't we tell him that? Mm -hmm. And so if we told him that, how can we sit here and say, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm done. That's not even right. Right? All right, I'm almost done, y'all. Ruth had a love for God that would not let her quit. All right. She wanted to be with God, mm -hmm. and she declared it to Naomi. She made it known that she was not leaving no matter what. Mm -hmm. So what's the theology behind that? Naomi thought she was doing the right thing by telling the girls to go find somebody else to marry, to telling them to go to their homeland. What Naomi wasn't factoring in is the relationship the girls built with God. Mm -hmm. Right? Orpah's decision was temporary. Mm -hmm. She left. She faded out of history. <laughs> yeah. And actually, usually when we talk about Orpah, the only thing we say is she made her wrong decision. Mm -hmm. Whenever we talk about mm -hmm. Orpah, her decision is wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. But whenever we talk about Naomi, I mean, uh, Ruth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. her decision was perfect. Ruth's decision was final. She chose God above everything else. Mm -hmm. So my question to you mm. is what are you going to choose? Right. Mm -hmm. We said stay the course. So the decision is yours. Mm -hmm. You can look at 2020 and say, I'm done. Or you can look at 2020 and say, golly, I made it this far. Mm. In March, I thought it was over. And you're going to have to make a choice. God bless you. Amen. Amen.
the only one that can fix it anyway. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll dismiss. God, our Father, we come. Yes, Lord. Lord, we come thanking you, God, for allowing us to make it this far. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God, that you have been so faithful, that yes, you have Lord. kept us all the way to this point. And Lord, we come, first of all, asking you to forgive us, God. Please, oh forgive God. us for even the thought of giving up on you. Yes, forgive us for even doubting you one little bit, God. Forgive us for not sticking with our promise to you, God. Now, Lord, we come asking you, God, that you will just continue to do the things that you need to do in this world and do the things you need to do in our lives, God. Lord, we ask that you would send healing where there is a need for healing, that you would send financial blessings where there is a need for financial blessings. Lord, we ask that you would restore families where family need to be restored. We ask, God, that you would send deliverance where there is a need for deliverance, God. All of those pains in our bodies, God, that you would heal those aches and pains in our bodies, God. That you would remove anything that's in our bodies that shouldn't be there. In our homes that shouldn't be there. In our, in our, our, our finances that shouldn't be there, God. That you would take care of it all. Please, oh God. Lord, and if there's anything that I've spoken and, and I've missed anyone, God, you know their hearts. You've heard them speak out before you, God. Lord, I ask that you would move on their behalf, God. That you would do whatever it is they're in need of, God. Whatever they're experiencing, God, Lord, I ask that you would be there in the midst, helping to comfort them and letting them know that you've got it under control. That you never let them go and you never will. That you are always there, God. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done. We thank you for the Sanctuary Christian Fellowship. We thank you, God, for all of those churches that are open in your name, God. We thank you, God, for not taking your hand off of this world. Even though it looks ugly, God, we understand that you are still in the process of doing what you do. Yes, Lord. So we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We ask yes, that you Lord. would bless our church, bless our offering. We ask that you would bless all those who give, God. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. You are